In this brief demo, I'm just going to show you how to apply some external CSS styles from an external CSS style sheet to this existing page. Right now I've got a simple page with a, a title using my H1 tags, as you can see over here in my code, as well as an image, a little puppy, uh, just a line of text surrounded with paragraph tags, a, a hypertext link set here with its standard blue and underline, and the second image here of a box of cookies. Okay, so I'm going to skip over to a finished version of this page here and just show you what it will look like styled. Then we'll talk around how it applies and how the code links from my HTML page to my external style sheet. So before I actually show you the code for the CSS, let me just talk about how we set up CSS styles here. I'm just going to switch screens here a bit. And here are the fundamentals for each CSS style that we would create. We have what's called a selector and we will do three kinds of selectors today. One is simply attaching it to a generic tag. In this case the example is a P tag. And then we have the declaration which is what gets affected to anything that has a P tag around it and that's called the declaration. Now within the declaration we have groups if you will of properties and then with each property we have a value. So in here we have three separate properties. Starting at the top we have what's called a font family, which is the type of font. And you can have lists of fonts and we'll talk about this a little deeper when we get into fonts. But right now we're looking for it to declare it as an Arial font. If the Arial doesn't exist, any sans serif font. And the syntax is the property name with a colon and then the value. And in this case the value happens to be the fonts separated by commas. The next line down has to do with the font size. How big is the text? Again, the property with a colon and then the size as indicated by pixels. You can use percentages, but I would say for font size, always use pixels. 16px semicolon. And then down here we have a third element, a third property, which is the color. So we have color, colon, and in this case, the color value can be just typed in if it is a standard color like black, red, green, blue, violet, and so on. There are also hexadecimal codes we can apply here, but for today, we'll keep it simple and we'll just use the font name in this, or the uh, color name rather, which is in this case, black. So once again, I have a selector called P for my paragraph. And then with the curly braces surrounding the declaration, we have one or more properties with values for those properties. So now that I've shown you that, let me actually show you the finished CSS style sheet for the file that we saw. So we'll go back here. And so we started with this and then I'm going to switch over here. And here is the styled sheet and you can see the CSS code up here. And I'll just go through it quickly. At the top, if you recall in my HTML, your name should be surrounded by H1 tags. And you can see here H1 tags. Here is my selector H1, my declaration surrounded with the curly braces. And then in this case, it's just one property, color. And we do have a color called dark violet. And that's what I typed in here with a semicolon to close that off. The next one down has to do with my paragraph here, which I wanted to make green. So I have a P tag here with the declaration, color, semicolon, green. You can see here, I actually forgot to put in the semicolon but again, the code is forgiving. As long as I don't have a second property, I can get away with it, but best practice would be to put a semicolon here, so I will add that in right there. Okay, now these next three are kind of unique in a way. They have to do with the hypertext link, and we have what we call states with links, you know, a uh, normal state, a hover state, and what happens if we've already clicked on it called the visitor state. So the normal state is known as the ink, link rather, and we have an A tag, which is the link tag, semicolon link, which addresses the state of the link, which is the normal state, and I have color, green, and we have what's called text decoration, which can show and hide the underline, and we have many more, prop, many more values to that, but right now underline is a common one, so text, slash decoration, colon, underline, creates that underline. So it's green, 
with an underline, underline when it's normal. If I was to move my mouse over it, it would change red. So everything's the same, well actually it's not the same, but the same properties with different values. Color changes to red, text decoration changes to none. So the underline will disappear, the text will change red. And then having visited that at least once, I will make it green underline. Basically put it back the same as it was when it was normal. So these three affect the one link, or actually any link that would be on the page. In this case, there is only one link, therefore it affects this one link. Now this next style is a different type of style. It's called a class. And a class starts with a dot or a period, and we give it a unique name. I've called it puppy border underscore class. And the way that works is you actually apply it inside of your tag, class equals, inside of the tag. And in this case, I've attached it to uh, an image. And the properties are border color, dark orange, and it's being applied to this puppy image up here. And I've actually applied a second set of properties to make the bottom of the border thicker. So border bottom width, and the width is 10 pixels. And we do have to declare a border style when we're working with borders. And there are a number, but I just chose the common one called solid right here. So that is what we call a class style. And if I go back to my source code, where is it here? Uh, my image right here, class. Inside of my image tag, I have a space, then class equals puppy border underscore class. Okay, so that's how that gets applied. And then the last one here, similar to the uh, class style, but more rigid, if you will, it's called an ID and it starts with a hashtag. And the unique thing about the ID is that it can only apply be applied to one single element on the page. You can't use it twice on one page. You can use it on different pages, but on the one page, only one time per page. And this applies to this bottom photo. So I went around and actually applied a style for the top, left, bottom, and right of the image. So border width. Now there's a common one called thick. We can specify pixels as well. Border style, once again, solid. And then one for each border color. So border left color, border right color, border top color, and border bottom color. And you can see here I have unique colors for each, each one. And these are our CSS styles. They are in their own unique file outside of this HTML file. If I go back to my source code here. And once again, they are linked in the head through a link tag. And the pathway is the href. And you can see here that they are contained in a folder called CSS. The actual file name is CSS underscore demo dot CSS. Then we need to append this with the style sheet properties. So REL equals style sheet, space, type equals text, slash, CSS. And of course, all of these are held inside of quote marks. So this is the syntax on how to link to an external style sheet. And I'd like you to try that now, or we'll do it together in class. And that's the basics of applying an external CSS style sheet to our HTML file, which I'll just quickly go back to the original here. Looks like that with no styles, and looks like that with styles applied. And really the styles are almost infinite in what we can do with them. There are hundreds of different properties, hundreds of different values to those properties. And it's something I would encourage you to explore on your own. And that is the simple lesson on how to apply CSS styles from an external style sheet to your HTML file.